All right, what's up guys? Welcome to another day in the life of a sports trader episode. Going to do a full day of trading today. So we're going to start with the Australian racing. It's just past one o'clock now, so we're about to start. Going to work till around eight, uh, have a nap, do some bits. Going to do a bit of UK racing this time of the year. The quality is quite weak. And then we're going to take a look at some of the Breeders' Cup action in the USA. USA Racing, I usually stay away from altogether, but there's a little bit of decent action on, so maybe we'll give it a go tonight, but we'll see how it goes. So, as you can see, got some quality action on at Flemington and Rose Hill. So we're gonna just trade these two tracks, and then got the British Racing, which looks pretty weak. And then we're gonna look at the Breeders' Cup, as I said, at where is it? Keeneland, right here. So quite a lot of action there in the evening. Not too hopeful, but um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. All right, let's get to it. First race, 125 Rose Hill. And we're jumping straight in play here. We're not doing any pre-race. Um, you like I said, there's only 100 grand matched. And Rose Hill is a New South Wales track, which means that Betfair implement charges when your back bets exceed a thousand dollars. So we're gonna be really selective with our pre-race trades. Um, so yeah, looking for an entry here. Uh, just looking to lay horses where there's weak support. So I'm actually trading without pictures. Um, I'm just trading from, based off what I see on the ladders. So there is method to the madness and I do show my techniques in my video pack, which you can see via my website if that interests you. But um, yeah, there, there is ways to profit from in-play racing on Australian racing uh, without even looking at the race. There's no point even getting live images because they're like, there's like a five, 10 second lag. So it, there's no money to be made uh, looking at that. You know, you gotta be on the ball, split second timing it is doing things in play. So we were looking for weak support. We found an entry and it didn't pay off on this first race so we exit the first race with a small loss bearable loss so move on from there all right second race of flemington it's about 70 grand matched 10 minutes out now this is going to be the real money maker today at least that's what we're hoping this is going to be the main feature track and it's not a new south wales track so we don't have to worry about any uh charges we can really go hammer and tong at it when the opportunity arises so I've just pulled up the market overview chart here on the left. This gives a real good overview of all the prices. So you can see how all the prices are responding um, to each other in one chart. So of course the favorite, which takes up the bulk of the volume of the matched money, is gonna have the biggest influence over the price. So whichever way this way goes, the corresponding second and third favorites are gonna move accordingly. And that's how we tackle um the pre-race markets this chart has absolutely no use in play by the way in play is way too volatile and you need to either go by what's happening in the race or um what's happening on the ladder which is what i do for australian racing so just a few scalps pre-race and as you can see here there's been some interesting price action um the favorites drifted pretty hard and the second favorite hasn't come in at all. Now, maybe that's partially due to the fact that the third favorite has come in slightly, so it's counteracted. Um, but yeah, it's really unusual price action on the second favorite. It's really stayed within range despite this first horse drifting. So I do suspect the favorite to come back in somewhat. So I'm just backing it here. Hopefully it touches six against or breaks it even so we can make around 50, 60 quid. Um, but yeah, we're too close to the off now and price didn't go where I would have liked it to have done. Um, nothing you can do about that. Just gotta take it on the chin. So we'll take 30 quid. And uh, by the way, I'm willing to risk a little bit more in play on Flemington than I would do on Rose Hill. One being obviously the fact that there's no charges and two, it's a lot more liquid. So I will be trying to press a little bit harder so same as before just looking for weak support a lot of money stacked up here on the lay side as opposed to the back side so we're just jumping in front of it um 
but if his money disappears, then we're gonna flip our position and back the horse. So it's all about timing. The execution is all about timing when it comes to this uh, in play stuff. So let's see what happens. All right, we're past the halfway mark and the price just isn't drifting to where I'd hope it would. And if this money starts getting eaten up, which could happen very quickly given that we're entering the final few furlongs, I'm going to back it. So just waiting for that drop in price. And there you go, the money's getting eaten up. So we're just gonna jump on the backside and hopefully catch a nice spike. And there you go, below evens. Um, should make at least 100 quid here. Ooh. It's bounced back against us. All right, we got away with that. Ordinarily, I'd have my lay bets uh, sat in the market beforehand, which I didn't in this case. Um, but yeah, we got away with it in this instance. I'm, I'm getting a bit distracted talking and doing this at the same time. So lesson going forward, but yeah, happy with that trade. That's a good one. All right, we're off to a hot start. Um, back to Rosil. Just made one quick back to lay, just one quick scalp on the favorite here, as you can see down here. Um, but yeah, we're gonna wait, wait to go and play because it's just not enough liquidity. Well, 150 grand match, it's not gonna be as good as Flemington, so we have to be very careful with our staking at Rosil. Same draws before, money stacked up on the lay side, just jumping in front of it. The pro money starts getting eaten up, then we're just gonna, just gonna flip our position. Okay, entering the final few furlongs, and I do expect that spike north. Okay, there we go. Another 23 pound in the bin. All right, back to Flemington. The liquidity is picking up nicely on this track. So we're just gonna fire in a few lay bets here, just take advantage of this drift on the favorite but if it starts running out of steam if it comes back below 3.7 then we're going to just scratch it for a small loss and it looks like that's the case now so we're just gonna have to wait for another entry all right going and play same drill as usual just jumping in front of the money on the lay side and hopefully catch a spike upward There we have it, another 28 quid in the bin. Once again, I should have had my a couple more back bets sitting in the market early because I did spike back. But uh, yeah, we're running hot so far. So good start. All right, back to Rosewood. A little bit more money matched this time. Didn't manage to get anything done pre-race. We do want to keep our powder dry for the later races when liquidity picks up. So let's say, see if we can capture anything in play so this time we're doing the opposite thing we're just jumping in front of the back money on this second favorite what's great about australian racing is that when there's a lot of support for a horse the price usually comes in pretty fast it doesn't really whipsaw it just goes trends in one direction for a long time even the horse even if the horse goes on to lose you can expect some really outrageously short prices very early in the race so hopefully we'll try and capture as many of those spikes as possible on camera because no matter what happens today this video is going up regardless <laughs> so hopefully we can capture some good moves and make some decent money okay so this time we've we got matched to shorts we had to adjust our position slightly we had to bring the we hopefully, we tried to get matched on 1.3, we got matched on 1.5 instead. Um, and then as you saw, there was a big spike north. It went up to, what was it, 2.2 or something? I can't remember. Before it came back down to 1.01. So we really want to be caught in a roller coaster like that in any future races. We want to have our stakes sitting there in the market ready. So another 13 pound in the bin. All right, back to Flemington. Just a couple of scalps 
here. As you can see, this is going to be a very competitive race. There's a good five, six horses trading at hovering around 10 to 1. If you look at this market overview chart, they're all bouncing off each other, these prices in a very tight tick range. So we're just going to look for a horse with weak support and just hopefully lay it. Um, but yeah, let's, let, let, let's see what happens. All right, so fighting a couple of lays on this fifth horse here. And we are approaching the halfway mark and it still hasn't drifted. And because it's high rods, the, the money's a little bit thinner. So if we don't see a move soon, we're gonna have to get out, which is looking like the case now. So last couple of further, let's see. Oh, oh. And we missed it and it spiked all the way against us. And we are going to have a big fat red here. Um, that's just bad execution on my part. It was a good entry. The price didn't spike. It didn't uh, like I wanted to, but I waited too long. I should have exited when I didn't see what I wanted to see at that time in the race. So because I waited too long, I missed my exit and I've just been stung with 140 pound loss. So that puts us uh, back to, well, but still in profit, but um, that's a real kick in the teeth. <laughs> but it's still early in the session. We'll, we've still got some good racing coming up. So let's, let's try and avoid that sort of thing again. All right, back to Rose Hill. Some better liquidity this time. Quarter of a million matched pre-race on here. And just gonna jump in front of this back money on this second horse. Uh, it looks like it should spike downwards. You know, to the naked eye, a lot of this is probably gonna look like guesswork, but like I said, there is method to the madness. It just takes experience. It took me a long time um, to get used to Australian racing because it trades very differently to UK racing. What's great about it though, by the way, is that it's very unmanipulated. Um, there's not a lot of bots flying around and there's a lot less, less shrewd punters on here as opposed to the UK markets, um, which is good for us. So for the last few years, I've, you know, I've made a lot of money off Australian racing. So it's really worth waking up early on a Saturday morning and trading those four hours and then taking the afternoon off, uh, especially in the winter when the jump season is on. So yeah, good trade that, another 30 pound in the bin. All right, back to Flemington. And there's really good liquidity on this race, but unfortunately I just can't make a go of the pre-race scalping markets today. I'm just not feeling it, just can't get any rhythm. Every time I make one or two successful back to lays, the price just runs right through me and then I end up chasing it back just to scratch it. So it's looking like it's gonna be a tricky day for pre-race, which is really unusual given I, that I make most of my money pre-race on Australian racing. Um, whereas today, the, the one day I've put the camera on, I'm making more money in play <laughs> as opposed to pre-race. So <laughs> it is what it is. All right, so that's really disappointing. We've got about 200 grand matched here across a four or five tick range and we only managed a fiver, which is, I mean, that's just dire. All right, so I tried to flip my position here because it looked like that money was getting eaten up, which is a good sign for a horse that's coming in in price. And what happened was the money got eaten up and then it spiked north and then it came all the way back down. So I just caught, got caught out by the whipsaw. Um, it was a good entry initially, but I just managed myself poorly. I should have scratched it and just stayed on the fence with that one. So that's a bad loss, that, but that, that's on me, that one. All right, so we're gonna look at Morfittville, which is not a bad track. The only reason why I'm giving, having a peep at this time is because it's 140 grand matched. But as you can see in play, what should stand out immediately is how thin the markets are. So. On Rose Hill, for example, on races where you get 150 or two, 200 grand matched, there's still a lot more bigger stakes in play, whereas here, there's really nothing to take advantage of because the markets are so thin. But uh, we'll, we'll give it one go just to see how it trades. Uh, and yeah, this, this 
<laughs> I've made a mess of it already and I've needlessly given away 30 pounds. Now, I have no problem making bad calls because that's just the nature of the game, but making trades where you don't absolutely have no business making, getting involved in races where you absolutely shouldn't be placing trades, like that for example is just inexcusable. So, yeah, that that's a that's a really that that was an avoidable loss. That was just stupid. All right, back to Rose Hill. Pretty standard, 180 or so grand matched pre-race. Like I said before, just keeping our powder dry for the in-play stuff. Uh, and again, I didn't have my back bet sitting in the market early enough, so... Oh, okay, we got matched there, thankfully. Um, but yeah, the price has just reversed against us and <laughs> we ended up escaping with a tiny profit, a pound. So at least we've stopped the bleeding for now. All right, to Flemington and we've got some really interesting price action here. So as you can see, there's a lot of heavy support on this favorite. You can see these four figure stakes sitting on the back side of the money and it's just pushing the price down consistently. It's just a solid wall of money and all we're doing is just jumping in front of it. And with these kind of races, when you have support like that, as I said earlier with Australian racing, there's not a lot of whipsaw um, early on. And often with horses like this, you get heavy support pushing the price really short, very early. So that's what I anticipate is gonna happen just based off experience, I've seen this happen before. So we're gonna slowly drip lay our way out and try and catch a spike, hopefully midway through the race at around 1.5. Um, and hopefully try and make a hundred quid here. But if I don't see what I want to see by the halfway mark and the horse starts drifting, then I'm going to be running for the exit door and scratching it. I really don't want to take any risk here and make another silly three figure loss. So just dripping my way out and hopefully catch a spike at 1.5. A lot of backing going on, which is a good sign. Just need that spike. We're past the halfway mark now. So we're cutting it a little bit fine. All right, we're gonna have to plan our exit. And there we go, there's that spike. There we go. <laughs> That's good, 100 pound in the bin. And as you saw there, it went to 1.2, went all the way up to 2.2 before it came back in. So those are things you want to avoid. You just want to take, make your move and then get out of there. You don't want to be trading the last few furlongs, but uh, in this instance, it paid off. The greed in me kind of wishes that I held on longer to this position, just because I've seen these races play out and they usually, I've got a good hit rate on them. But uh, cause I'm doing it on camera, <laughs> I don't want to make any silly losses or silly mistakes. Um, and I especially don't want to throw away good positions like that one. All right, so again, like Morfordville, we're only having a peep at this track, Gold Coast, because there's over a hundred grand matched. Uh, but again, as you can see, the markets are really thin. So I'm absolutely not gonna place any bet here unless there's a real standout opportunity, which doesn't look like the case. All right, back to Rose Hill. I'm gonna start in play. very thin on the lay side here and this is quite a short race so this was not a good idea getting involved at those sort of odds when the liquidity is this low and the race is this short so I was kind of asking for trouble and again needlessly giving money back to the market there. All right, so back to Flemington. This is looking like a really tricky session actually which is kind of funny because the last as I said earlier, the last few weeks have been really easy to trade. Um, really struggling, <laughs> really swinging for the fences, just can't find any rhythm, any momentum. So I've kind of surrendered to the fact that this is not going to be a two, three hundred pound session. So just want to avoid any stupid mistakes. And again, just Managed myself really poorly here, just really got caught out. Um, and again, just desperate. Now I just placed that trade out of desperation to make money 
I just put unnecessary pressure on myself. So got to relax, regroup and yeah, stop, stop the bleeding. All right, let's try not to give any more money back now. Back to Rose Hill. All right, this favorite, looks like there's a bit of support coming in on this favorite, so we're just gonna piggyback off the, the backside on this money and hopefully get out 10 or 20 quid, whatever we can. Oh, uh, all right, profit is profit, 12 quid. In the right direction, at least. Now, I know it's hardly an excuse, but I'm trading the cricket side by side. Um, as you can see, just here. Um, made a few good moves on it. It's one day cricket, so it's really slow. So, the set and the second innings has really been just, literally just one way traffic. So now I can just turn my attention more to the racing. Not saying it's an excuse, I'm not using that as an excuse because it, because it has been hard, this uh, this Australian racing uh, session. But uh, yeah, finally made some money pre-race for once. Let's try and see if we can top it up in play. Ah, another bad entry. So we gave some money back, but again, just a bit, a bit of green, a bit of profit in the right direction at least. Right, back to Rosil. I think we're really at the edge of the limit for our aggregate back bets. I think we're close to around a thousand or so. So I'm quite hesitant to do anything pre-race now. There's only a few races left anyway. So um, yeah, we're just gonna stick with in play. All right, there's some support coming in on this favor, so we're gonna jump onto this. We're gonna back it and hopefully make 10, 20, 30 quid. See how far it comes down. Past halfway mark, so we are getting ready to scratch it if it doesn't come in and it isn't, or it is. Okay, so, all right, we got a bit lucky with this, <laughs> admittedly. Um, yeah, the less said about that, the better. We, we came out on the right side. 37 pounds in the bin, we'll take that, we'll move on. All right, back to Flemington. There's only, I think, two more races left at Flemington. So, again, Made a mess of things pre-race, just couldn't find any momentum. Um, every time I seem to enter a trade, it just seems to go through me and then I'm just chasing it back just to scratch it for a tick or so loss. And that was the case again in this race. So yeah, no real entry in play on this one. So yeah, 20 pound loss, disappointing. Back to Rose Hill. Wow, market's really thin on this race. So definitely gonna stay away from this one. No trade. All right, final race at Flemington. Let's try and go out with a bang. Can't believe how difficult it's been to trade pre-race. I mean, usually I cruise um, on Australian racing when it comes to trading before the off, but today's been really tough, really tricky. I think I've jinxed myself a bit by turning the camera on, but um, honestly, I can't for the life of me think what else I could have done. Made a nice lay there, lay to bag, so another 12 quid in the bin. All right, final race of the day now. So we just want to taper off. We don't want to do anything stupid and take any unnecessary risk. I know we haven't made an awful lot of money, but the last thing you want to do is give it all back and God forbid spend five hours uh, for a session where you've made nothing or even worse, lose money. 
which shouldn't be the case this session but the way I've traded today has been like a raw novice so hopefully we can do some you know pull the rabbit out of the hat in the afternoon I really wanted to take the pressure on myself this afternoon based on what I thought I was going to make this morning but that hasn't been the case so I'm not I'm not going to try to make money if the opportunity is there it's there if it's not I'll, I'll call it a day and yeah I'm not going to work myself too hard because if we do look at the Breeders' Cup later on this evening. It could be a long day, and I don't want to tire myself out. So, yeah, that, that's pretty much a scratch race, one pound loss. Um, not a good session. I mean, we still made money, but I didn't trade well. I, I made too many mistakes. I got involved with markets I shouldn't have. Um, but yeah, it's just the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. So this is kind of where we're at, 243 pounds up for the day, only 88 pounds from the racing, which is really disappointing to be, if I'm being honest. Um, when you consider the fact that I made around, let's see, let's see the losses, around 140, 200, almost 300 pounds worth of losses in there. Yeah, and a lot of it was just careless mistakes getting stuck in when I shouldn't, getting stuck in on races that I shouldn't have been trading, um, and just having my attention taken away from the racing while I was dabbling on the cricket. So, don't get me wrong, it was a little bit tricky as well doing it on camera, there was that added pressure, but that's just the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. Um, but we're still up, and that's what counts. So, going to the afternoon, we'll try and top this up. Um, We'll, do, we'll only focus on the quality tracks this afternoon, maybe Doncaster and Aintree later on. But yeah, we'll have a look, we'll see. As I said, this sort of time of the year, I'm not too keen on the UK racing. Prize money and liquidity isn't that great. So I usually like to go flat out on the Australian racing in the morning. So I'm absolutely knackered right now. It's around eight whatever it is so just gonna have a three four hour sleep uh we've got to put our christmas tree up actually before i start work so i'm gonna crack on with that and do a bit of uk racing so i'll see you guys in a bit okay good afternoon freshened up now time to have a look at the uk racing um i'm gonna put that christmas tree up but before we do so let's take a quick peek at what lies ahead. Well, this is what the UK racing looks like this afternoon. Nothing to rave about if I'm honest, but we do have Doncaster and Aintree, which are going to be the main tracks. Kelso, Wincanton, probably going to stay away from in all likelihood. Let's just take a look at what sort of prize money is on offer. So the feature race at 211 and 245, another good one. Decent bit of prize money on there. And if we pull these up, Pull these markets up you can see there's already 65 grand matched on the feature race at Aintree so that's going to be a good one to trade and if we look at Doncaster feature race is at where are we uh, 313 as you can see there's a lot of prize money on offer there so those are the ones we're going to look out for let's look at Kelso uh, and there you go not a lot of prize money on offer weak card Wincanton same story and the same with Chelmsford. So we're going to stay away from those and I'm going to bet quite defensively this afternoon. Um, the markets aren't great. Look, I've already pulled up Aintree, which is a feature track. Only 270 grand matched. And this is UK racing. If you bear in mind the Australian racing early this morning, we routinely had half, north of half a million matched on the tracks. So. This is why I tend to focus on Australian racing as opposed to UK racing. But like I said, we'll see what we can pull out this afternoon.
Okay, we're done here. It's looking good. As you can see, we've got the frosted, the frosted effect. Really gives it that winter, that warm, cozy winter feel. So, all right, let's, let's pop the lights on. Three, two, one, pow. Oh, it's like a bloody rave. Let's turn this off. There we go. How's that look? Pretty cool, right? All right, now back to work. Oh, sorry, my phone, phone, uh, camera battery died. So I didn't even realize this, just had to charge it. So it's a little bit dark now, but we finished about an hour, hour and a half ago. We finished at 2.30. Bracing was just, it's just not good quality this time of the year. It's just a waste of time sitting there for hours trying to place a trade. And the longer you sit at the screen and not place a trade, the more you get that itch. So I just thought, you know, let's just call it a day. Um, made about i think how much 70 quid or something 80 quid this afternoon let me show you excuse my lunch just there where is it so we finished today 320 quid up but as you can see afternoon racing we only traded what one two one two three four five six races and we made 30 45 55 75, 75 just shy of 80 quid um so 24 races 163 pound 320 pound up for the day and there you have it bit of a messy morning just couldn't find any rhythm as i said earlier left a lot of money on the table could easily have been a five six hundred pound day easily and i know it, you shouldn't talk like that it's not a good way to think of things you know would have could have should have we still made money um and that's about average 300 or so for a Saturday. And I'll probably make another two, 300 tomorrow. So that'll make it a 600 pound weekend. And I always look to make around anywhere between 400 and 600 a weekend. And when you tally that up, that's around 20 to 30 grand a year, just off the weekends, just by working probably around up to 10 hours, up to 10 hours. So we done about five hours this morning on the Australian racing and another two hours in the afternoon. So for seven hours, 320 quid, that's uh, just shy of 50 pound an hour. It's around 40, 50 pound an hour. And that wasn't even my best session. So yeah, that's it. We're gonna clock out here. I'm not gonna touch the American racing. I'm just feeling a bit knackered and just got some other bits to do and probably gonna pop out. But yeah, I'm gonna try and do things like this a little bit more regularly. So you guys can see what my routine is and how I approach the markets. But hopefully it's given you some insight as to what a full day looks like for me on a Saturday during the winter. So hope you enjoyed that. If you've got any questions, let me know. But um, don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you guys soon. Peace.